Welcome to Dental Digest Plus. Today's topic is Casting Procedure. Casting is an object which is formed by the solidification of a fluid, that has been poured or injected into the mold. Casting is one of the most widely used methods for fabrication of metallic restorations, such as, full cast crown, framework of the cast partial dentures, inlay, onlay, etc. In dentistry, the resulting casting must be an accurate reproduction of the wax pattern, in both surface details and overall dimension. Casting is the process by which, a wax pattern of a prepared tooth is fabricated, and converted into its metallic replica. The lost wax casting technique was first described, at the end of the 19th century for making dental castings. This process consists of a material, which is surrounding the wax pattern, which is made of the heat-resistant investment material, after that elimination of the wax is done, by heating the casting ring into the oven, and then we have to introduce the molten metal into the mold, through a channel called sprue. Now, let's take a look at the objectives of casting. First objective is to heat the alloy as quickly as possible to a completely molten condition. Second is to prevent oxidation, which is done by heating the metal, with a well-adjusted torch, and third is to produce a casting with sharp details, and this is done by having adequate pressure, to force the molten metal into the mold. Now as you can see, these are the steps of casting procedures. In clinical steps, first we have to do the tooth preparation, and after that, we need to take an impression of the prepared tooth, and its surrounding tissues. After taking an impression of the prepared tooth, we have to do the laboratory steps. These laboratory steps are, dye preparation, preparation of wax pattern, sprue former and its attachment, casting rings and liners, investing procedure, wax burnout, casting of alloy into the mold, cleaning of cast restoration, and finishing and polishing. Now one by one we will take a look at the steps of the casting procedure. First we will take a look at the tooth preparation. It is the first clinical step for casting procedure, in this, preparation of the tooth structure is done to receive the cast restoration. In case we need to prepare a crown, we will reduce the amount of the tooth structure, to receive crown, and if we need to prepare inlay or onlay, then we have to prepare the cavity in tooth to receive the inlay or onlay cast restoration. Second step is making of an impression. In this step, an impression of the prepared tooth structure is made by proper impression material. Each and every detail of the prepared tooth structure should be recorded into the impression, which is the negative replica of the prepared tooth. After that, next step is preparation of the master die, or cast. In this step, we prepare the positive reproduction of the impression, which involves the prepared tooth, and which is required for the processing of inlays, or bridge structures, this positive reproductions are called die, which is a duplicate of the intraoral structure and over this prepared dye, we can prepare the cast restoration by indirect method. Fourth step is wax pattern preparation. 
It is the contouring of the wax pattern, into the desired shape and form. Wax pattern can be prepared directly inside the prepared tooth, or it can be prepared on the cast that we have prepared, by taking an impression of the prepared tooth. If we have prepared wax pattern directly inside the patient's mouth, it is called direct wax technique, and if we have prepared the wax pattern on the cast, it is called indirect wax technique. For preparing wax pattern we use inlay wax. Type 1 inlay wax is used for the direct wax technique, and type 2 inlay wax is used for the indirect wax technique. We should also know, how to remove the wax pattern from the prepared tooth cavity preparation, without tearing or breaking of the wax pattern. Indirect wax technique the wax should be allowed to cool thoroughly before the pattern is removed. Then, we have to hook the wax pattern, using an explorer point and then rotate it out of the cavity. In indirect wax technique, the wax should be allowed to cool thoroughly before the pattern is removed from the dye. After that a constant light grip is maintained on the pattern by the thumb and forefinger of right hand, and pressure is applied against them with the thumb and forefinger of the left hand, which also holds the die. By doing this carefully, remove the wax pattern from the die. Fifth step is sprue former and its attachment. What is sprue? Sprue is part of casting that acts as a channel for the molten metal, to flow into the mold cavity, after the wax has been eliminated. Now let's talk about the functions of the sprue. As you can see into the picture, it facilitates the flow of molten metal from crucible to the mold. It stores the additional metal and prevents shrinkage porosity into the final product. It may be used as handle to remove the wax pattern from the cast. These are the functions of the sprue. Now, let's talk about the various types of the sprue. The sprue can be made out of the wax, plastic, or metal. Wax sprues are preferred for most castings, because they melt at the same rate as the wax pattern, and because of that, it allow easy escape of the molten wax. Solid plastic sprues soften at a higher temperature than the wax pattern, and they may block the escape of wax, which results into the increased casting roughness. However, Plastic sprues can be useful when casting fixed partial dentures, because their added rigidity minimizes distortion. Hollow plastic sprues are also available, which allows the escape of wax. Now what is sprue crucible former? The sprue is attached to a crucible former, which is usually made of rubber and which forms the base of the casting ring during investing procedure. Crucible former can be made out of the metal, plastic, or rubber, they form a conical depression in investment, which can guide the flow of the molten metal. Now we will move on the sixth step which is casting ring and liners. While the investment material sets, Casting rings are used to confine the fluid investment material around the wax pattern, and it also restricts setting expansion of the mold. It also allow the hardened investment material to be safely handled during burnout and casting. Casting rings are available in round and oval shapes. Casting rings can be made out of the metal, plastic, or rubber. Split rings of metal or plastic are also available. The most commonly used technique to provide space for investment material expansion, 
is by using casting ring liner. Various materials used as ring liners are Asbestos ring liner Cellulose ring liner Ceramic ring liner and Combination of ceramic and cellulose ring liner Asbestos is no longer used in dentistry because of its carcinogenic and toxic potential. Casting ring liner will act as a cushion, which can allow the expansion of the mold. Casting ring liner also permits easy removal of investment after casting procedure. When ring is carried from furnace to casting machine, it reduces heat loss as it is thermal insulator. Please note this, to ensure uniform expansion, a liner is cut to fit the inside diameter of the casting ring with no overlap. After placing casting ring and liners, seventh step is investing procedure. It is the process of covering or enveloping the wax pattern, with a suitable investment material before casting procedure. Investment materials used are Gypsum bonded investment Phosphate bonded investment and Ethyl silicate bonded investment The wax pattern should be cleaned of any debris, grease, or oils. A commercial wax pattern cleaner or a diluted synthetic detergent may be used to clean the wax pattern. Any excess liquid is shaken off, and the pattern is left to air dry before mixing the investment material. The thin film of cleanser left on the pattern reduces the surface tension of the wax, and it will permit the better wetting of the investment, which will ensure the complete coverage of the wax pattern. There are two techniques of mixing investment material. First is hand investing, which is also called as brush technique, and second is vacuum technique. First let's talk about the brush technique. Water is added first, and after that slowly add the powder into the water. Then hand spatulate the mix, to incorporate the powder quickly, after that cover the bowl and do the mechanical mixing or you can mix the investment material by hand. After that, coat the wax pattern with the investment material with the help of a brush, and we should carefully coat the internal surface and the margin of the wax pattern. Then fill the ring slowly with the investment material, starting from the bottom. The casting ring should be completely filled, and it is leveled with top by edge of plaster spatula. Then we should allow investment material to set for at least 45 to 60 minutes. Now let's talk about the vacuum investing. First we should hand spatulate the mix, then close the mixing bowl with lid. This mixing bowl has a spatula, and casting ring attached with it. After that attach the vacuum hose to the mixing bowl, and mix accordingly to the manufacturer's recommendations. After mixing is completed, do not remove the vacuum, and invert the bowl so that investment material goes into the casting ring. Remember that, we should fill the casting ring under vibration. After that remove the vacuum hose before setting of the investment material. Then we should allow investment material to set for at least 45 to 60 minutes. After filling casting ring with the investment material, the eighth step is wax burnout procedure. Elimination of the wax pattern from the mold of set investment is referred as a burnout procedure. Ring may be placed on a raised object within the oven, to completely eliminate the wax, and form a cavity. 
into which the molten metal is cast. Oven is preheated to approximate 400 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. And after that, temperature is raised slowly to 700 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The ring should be maintained long enough at the maximum temperature, to minimize a sudden drop in temperature during removal from the oven. Such a drop in temperature could result in an incomplete casting, because of the excessively rapid solidification of the alloy, as it enters the mold. After the burnout the ninth procedure is casting. Now first let's understand what is casting, it is a process of obtaining a metallic duplicate of a missing tooth structure, by pouring molten metal into a mold, then we allow the molten metal to solidify, to obtain a metallic duplicate of a missing tooth structure. Casting of an alloy into the mold space uses two basic requirements. One is heat source which is used to melt the alloy, and second is casting force which is used to force molten alloy into the mold. Different types of materials and method are used as heat source to melt alloy, two basic modes are, by using torch flame, and by electricity. Torch melting is used for low temperature metals, and electric melting is used for higher temperature metals. In torch melting, we use mixture of natural and artificial gas, like oxygen and oxyacetylene gas, and in case of the electric melting, we use electric resistance melting method, or induction melting methods. Torch heating is less faster than electric heating, an electric heating melts alloy faster, but it can be easily overheated. When using a blowtorch as a heat source, we need to keep in mind the zones of the blowtorch flame. These zones are mixing zone, combustion zone, reducing zone, and oxidizing zone. In mixing zone, air and gas are mixed before combustion, and there is no heat present in this zone. In combustion zone, gas and air are partially burned, and it has oxidizing nature, so it should be kept away from molten metal, and it is green in color. Reducing zone is the hottest part of the flame. It is the most effective zone for melting, and it should be kept constantly over the alloy, and, it is blue in color. Oxidizing zone has lower temperature than reducing zone, it oxidizes the metal, so it should never be used for melting alloys. Please note that, when the reducing portion of the flame is in contact with an alloy, the surface of an alloy is bright and mirror-like, and when the oxidizing portion of the flame is in contact with an alloy, there is a dull film developed over the surface, because of this reason, we should never use oxidizing portion of the flame, to melt an alloy during casting procedure. During electrical melting of alloys, when electric current is passed through a conductor, depending upon the voltage applied across it, the heat energy is produced. The alloy is melted electrically by a resistance heating. Current is passed through a resistance heating conductor, and automatic melting of the alloy occurs into the graphite crucible, or ceramic crucible. The melting of alloy requires a crucible to act as a platform, on which, the heat can be applied to the metal. Types of casting crucibles available are clay, carbon, quartz, and, zirconia alumina. During melting of gold alloys, flux may be added for fusing of metal, 
to prevent oxidation, and, to decrease porosity. Most commonly used fluxes are, fused borax powder, which is ground with the boric acid powder. Different types of casting force, which are used for pushing the molten metal into mold are Gravitational force Vacuum force Pneumatic force Pressure force Centrifugal force and Piston plunger forces Device used for forcing the molten alloy into the mold under pressure, are called casting machine. Casting machines used are air pressure casting machines, centrifugal casting machine, electrical resistance heated casting machine, and induction melting machine. By using one of the casting machines, we complete the casting. After that, Next step is cleaning of the cast. When a type 3 or 4 gold alloy has been cast, and it has solidified, the ring should be quenched in water, as soon as the button exhibits a dull red glow. After that trimming of investment material is done, from the button end of the ring, then investment is being pushed out of the casting ring. After that the mold is broken open, and the investment is removed from the casting. Care must be taken to avoid damaging the margin of the casting. After that the casting is held in a sandblasting machine, to clean the remaining investment from its surface. Sometimes surface of casting appears dark, with oxides, and tarnish. Such surface film can be removed by a process known as pickling. Best method for pickling, is to place the casting in a test tube, or dish, and pour the acid over it. The final step is finishing and polishing. After pickling the casting is trimmed, shaped, and smooth with a suitable burrs or stones. The sprue is sectioned off with a cutting disc. Minimum polishing is required if all the procedures from the wax pattern to casting are followed properly. White stone, rubber wheels, rubber discs, and fine grit are included in the finishing and polishing agents. After finishing and polishing, we will get the final product, which can be a crown bridge, inlay, onlay, or, metal framework for partial denture.